जी असलकम एंड वेलकम यू इन डिस्टेंट लर्निंग डॉक्टर शाहिद लेट स्टार्ट अवर लेक्चर रिगार्डिंग लिम्फोडीमा बिफोर दिस लेक्चर वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द लिम्फ एडीमा एंड टाइप्स ऑफ लिम्फोडीमा एज प्राइमरी एंड सेकेंडरी लिम्फोडीमा सो टूडे वी विल टॉक अबाउट इन्वेस्टिगेशन एंड मैनेजमेंट regarding investigations uh, of lymph edema why investigations are necessary so it's important to know in lymph edema patient uh, it's usually possible to diagnose and manage lymph edema purely on the basis of history and examination so why there is a need of investigations on history and examination we can diagnose lymph edema <coughs> in patient uh, with a severe atypical and multifactorial swellings investigations may help in confirm to confirm the diagnosis and to also make management plan and also prognostic information in cases of severe and also in in cases where differential is a bit difficult like patient having chronic venous insufficiency or patient having bilateral or unilateral lipedema and to differentiate it between lymphedema it's difficult so we need at that time investigations to uh, to make a proper diagnosis so in investigation some routine tests are there like full blood count and renal function test <coughs> elect serum electrolytes liver function test thyroid function test like preteal uh, mixed edema and Uh, plasma total protein and albumin fasting glucose level c reactive proteins in cases of uh, uh, lymph edema with uh, inflammation inflammatory signs urine dipstick test uh, and also to observe for kyle urea blood smear for myclo uh, flareal in uh, flareases chest radiograph and ultrasonography uh, the investigation that is a gold standard for showing structural abnormalities of uh, larger lymphatics and lymph nodes uh, lymphangiography uh, it has a disadvantage because it is technically difficult and it may cause uh, further lymphatic injury uh, due to uh, reaction of <coughs> the contrast given uh, usually it is done by giving contrast between the first web space of the foot of the affected foot and then contrast is injected and uh, later on uh, fluoroscopic guided images are taken and also it's uh, now routinely it's an uh, absolute uh, method like in this picture you can see a normal pattern of the lymphatics in uh, thoracic duct lymph nodes paraortic lymph nodes ileic and femoral like you can see that so what happened in congenital hyperplasia we have already discussed this slide in the previous lecture that uh, on the right side on the left side you can see uh, enlargement dilated lymphatics you can see if distal obliteration that is hypoplasia or aplasia is there then proximal dilatation is there and if proximal obliteration then you can see right sided here you can see uh, right sided dilated lymphatics and if proximal obliteration with the distal obliteration so you can see here so it's uh, the findings you can see on uh, lymphangiography are like this one and another another in uh, lymphangiography another uh, type and another variety is there that is isotope uh, lymphocentigraphy this is a primary diagnostic technique in case of clinical uncertainty we use a radioactive technetium label protein or colloid particles and that almost uh, the other technique is the same we inject the radioactive particle and then with the gamma probe we locate and then we take uh, uh, the scans and this technique provides a qualitative measure of lymphatic function rather than a quantitative function or anatomical detail so more importance of this investigation is qualitative that is the lymphatic function and also uh, if we need quantitative lymph scintigraphy uh, that uh, provide information on the uh, lymphatic transport so here you can see this is the normal pattern in the first picture that is a and if we go on the b side that is primary lymph edema and in the c primary lymph edema that is increased accumulation of radioactive trace you can see in the soft tissue so this is uh, isotope lymphocentigraphy 
then CT scan can be done it is useful diagnostic test for lymphedema and in findings regarding the findings on CT scan in uh, lymphedema course uh, non-enhancing reticular honeycomb pattern we will see in the next slide and if uh, venous edema is there then increased volume of muscular compartment is there and if lipedema then increased subcutaneous fat has you can see in lymphedema this is uh, the arrow is showing honeycomb appearance of the lymphatics this is this is this is this picture and uh, this all will you see the findings on a ct scan of uh, lymphedema patient Magnetic resonance imaging that is non-contrast magnetic resonance imaging. This is shows classical circumferential again reticular pattern that is honeycomb within the epifacial compartment because lymphatics they are uh, more in epifacial compartment and using the principles of spin leg lim labeling MRI, this uh, lymphatic flow velocity can also be assessed and uh, monitored. So this uh, we use uh, a gadopentinate contrast that shows detailed anatomical and functional status of lymph vessels and lymph nodes here you can see mri lymphography this is these are all dilated lymphatics we can see here ultrasound this provides useful information about venous function including dvt and venous abnormalities it's like a diagnostic test to rule out to exclude the diagnosis from dvt or venous abnormalities then lymphofluoroscopies that is more recently uh, the fluorescent molecules such as uh, indocyanin green they are being used to imagine superficial uh, lymphatic system like shown in this picture the contrast is given and we can <coughs> see excellent anatomical and functional detail of the lymphatic system <coughs> and pathological examination it, 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 it pathological examination basically to rule out malignancies to exclude the malignancy in lymphedema patient and the samples of lymph node may be obtained by fine needle aspiration a needle core biopsy or surgical excision and also skin biopsy for lymphangiosarcoma post mastectomy patient and another investigation is lymph volume measurement this is useful tool to determine severity of lymphedema and to guide the management and assess a response to the treatment and this lymph volume is typically measured at the diagnosis then uh, following intensive treatment and also at follow-up so in this lymph volume measurement water plethysmography that is water displacement is the gold standard method and circumferential limb measurements are done and pyrometry is also done that is infrared light beam that measures the outline of the limb to calculate volume this is all about investigations so most common investigations which are uh, usually done in uh, such patient is the ct scan mri or isotopes uh, lymphocytography so next is the treatment of lymphedema patient so in order to treat lymphedema patient it is usually done uh, by not a single uh, person uh, whether it is a surgeon or a physician it's a multi-professional team that consists of uh, physical therapist nurses uh, orthotists physicians that includes dermatologist oncologist palliative care specialist then surgeons and social service, service professionals and early diagnosis and institution of management it's very important it's very essential because simple measures can be highly effective and they will prevent the development of disabling later stage disease we divide the treatment into two parts one is the conservative and other one is the <coughs> surgical conservative treatment having some physical uh, maneuvers and physical uh, varieties to do and uh, also some medication we can use uh, in uh, lymphedema so we'll discuss this one by one and <clears throat> regarding the goal of treatment <clears throat> the identification education and the treatment of at-risk patient this can slow down or even prevent the onset of disease in patients with lymphedema basically three goals of treatment are are there number one like in any other case to relieve the pain and to reduce the swelling because it's cosmetically uh, bad and also difficult for the patient to have a routine activities and prevent the development of complication 
how we evaluate the patient with lymphedema uh, as we know in all patient we take history that includes age of onset location progression exacerbating and relieving features for the lymphedema for the swelling <clears throat> then past medical history that also include cancer history family history obesity that uh, includes to take the history regarding the diet of patient height and weight for body mass index then different complications uh, venous arterial skin joint or neurological then we uh, assess uh, physical emotional and psychological symptoms then social uh, circumstances like mobility housing education work then some special needs are there <coughs> regarding footwear clothing compression garments and these all are modalities which will, uh, we will discuss uh, in upcoming uh, slides uh, that uh, are also used in the treatment of lymphedema patient then previous and current treatment which patient is taking pain control and compliance with the therapy and ability to self care <coughs> regarding relief of pain the 50% of uh, patient in lymphedema they usually <coughs> complain significant pain and this is multifactorial and also its severity and underlying cause that will vary depending upon the etiology and options include uh, non opioid and opioid analgesics we can use uh, steroids uh, antidepressants some muscle relaxants anti epileptics nerve blocks physiotherapy so we have a lot of uh, and uh, options available in uh, uh, in relieving the pain of patient and regarding control of swelling this control of swelling can be done in uh, in a two ways uh, one is uh, like in conservative part in conservative and other one is the surgical in uh, in in the conservative treatment uh, the physical therapy for lymphedema this comprising bed rest elevation bandage compression garments massage and exercise and it includes uh, uh, decongestive uh, lymphedema therapy that has two phases one is short intensive uh, period of therapist led care that is uh, usually it is done by the therapist uh, for a short intensive period then second is maintenance uh, that the patient learn the the therapy the care during the intensive period and later on he can do it with uh, he can do it himself without a therapist so the intensive care this consist of skin care and manual lymphatic drainage with the help of the massage and multi layer lymphedema bandaging bandaging and exercises the length of this intensive phase this vary and it depends upon the disease severity patient compliance and willingness and also ability of the patient to take more responsibility for the maintenance phase and this can extend over weeks rather than at the months and the skin care is very important in lymphedema patient to take care the skin and patient are taught are educated in the principles and practice of skin care the patient should inspect the affected skin and daily with special attention and the care which he has to take is to protect hands especially washing or gardening and also if he is a tailor she has to wear a thimble when swing and uh, never walk barefoot and also wear protective foot wear outside and if uh, he um, he has to do the shave better to use electric razor to depilate and never let the skin become uh, macerated and treat the cuts and grazes promptly wash and dry and apply antiseptic and plaster and also use insect repellent sprays and treat bites promptly with antiseptics and antihistamines seek medical attention as soon as the limb become hot painful or more swollen and do not allow blood to be taken from or injections to be given into an infected uh, an affected arm and protect the affected skin from the sun and consider taking antibiotics if going on holidays so in lymphedema patient skin care is very important he has to do either uh, all the measures or some of the measures he has to take care in management of the skin care in the skin of the lymphedema patient and regarding manual lymphatic drainage the basic aim is to evacuate fluid and protein from 
interstitial space and uh, stimulate lymphangion contraction so that uh, lymphatic flow can be uh, carried out and with the decongestion of impaired lymphatic pathways and development of contralateral roots so this uh, the therapist he usually do this um, manual lymphatic drainage daily and they also train the patient to perform a simpler or modified form of the massage that is known as simple lymphatic drainage and during this intensive phase the simple lymphatic uh, drainage the supplements manual lymphatic drainage and once the maintenance phase is required then simple lymphatic drainage can be carried out so multi layer lymph edema bandage and compression garments are also used this is also again a part of the uh, lymphatic drainage or uh, lymphatic drainage uh, conservative treatment there are elastic bandages which provide compression and they produced a sustained high resting pressure and they follow in a limb that is uh, and uh, if done properly in a limb then it reduces the swelling rather the aim is to provide support or compression the pressure is very important and it should be graduated like at the ankle and foot it should be 100% and at knee it is 70% and mid thigh 50% and in groin 40% so gradually more pressure or 100% at the ankle foot and gradually decreasing up to the groin 40% there are not invasive assessment uh, should be done um, to measure ankle brachial pressure index with a handheld doppler uh, ultrasound device this is necessary to commence any form of compression therapy there are uh, the effects of uh, multi layer lymphedema bandages uh, it reduces edema and it can also reduces shape to the affected area and skin changes can be reduced like hyperkeratosis it eliminates lymphoria and uh, support in elastic skin and also soften subcutaneous tissue the standard multi layer uh, lymphedema bandages and compression this is used in patient with ankle brachial pressure index more than or equal to 0.8 and modified techniques with lower pressure in those patients who so have moderate arterial disease with ankle brachial pressure 0.5 to 0.8 and this is contraindicated in those patient having severe, uh, severe arterial insufficiency in which uh, ankle brachial pressure index is less than 0.5 uh, and uncontrolled heart failure and severe peripheral neuropathy so these are the contraindication here you can see in uh, different slides the first one is showing multi layer bandages and the uh, above and below above is for upper limb lymphedema and the second one is lower limb edema multi layer bandages are used to reduce uh, edema and another slide right side upward this is showing uh, manual uh, lymphatic drainage with the massage and third one is uh, pneumatic compression devices are used and at night uh, the compression devices different garments they are used in reducing uh, the swelling of lymphedema patient <clears throat> regarding the exercise it is recommended that slow rhythmic and isotonic movements like swimming and massage this will increase venous and lymphatic return through the production of uh, movement and between skin and underlying tissue so this is essential uh, to the filling of initial lymphatics and then augmentation with the muscle pumps drugs the only drugs uh, which is uh, prescribed in lymph lymphedema patient is uh, benzopyrones this is basically a group of naturally occurring substances that is uh, flavonoids and this reduces uh, capillary permeability and improve microcirculatory perfusion and also stimulate interstitial uh, macrophages proteolysis reduce erythrocytes and platelet aggregation so only drugs which has anti inflammatory effect and used in lymphedema is uh, benzopyrones then comes uh, the surgical option and surgical treatment it has two parts bypass surgeries or ablative uh, and uh, reduction surgery bypass surgery usually done in those cases where there is uh, obliteration and dilated lymphatics are there on uh, investigations and ablative and reduction is used when uh, no such thing is there right? it's a secondary cause then cause to improve the cosmesis we reduce the limb volume so surgery it falls into three categories like bypass uh, liposuction and reduction this liposuction and reduction comes in ablative procedures or reduction uh, options in bypass uh, 
this is done in those patients uh, who have proximal ileo inguinal lymphatic obstruction and they have normal distal lymphatic channels and these are uh, these are rare patient that might get benefit and at least in the theory from lymphatic bypass we have different uh, options for lymphatic bypass like umental pedicle and skin bridge in gillies uh, procedure and ileal mucosal patch in kinmont he, he did this procedure and we can also do lymphatic venular anastomosis when lymphatic channels are uh, appreciably dilated and lymph nodes to the vein anastomosis again kinmoth he did this one here in this picture you can see ileal mucosal patches taken from the bowel in the, the picture shown on the left side you can see bowel continuity and a mucosal patch is taken and then it is anastomose to the cut lymph nodes this can can be done that is skin moth and also lymphovenous uh, bypass if dilated uh, lymphatics are there we can um, anastomose the lymphatic dilated lymphatics with the venous channels to uh, to have improved the lymphatic drainage through the venous system then liposuction can be done it's a one case series reported thus that uh, promising results with more than 100% reduction in the lymph edema volume and that can be maintained by ongoing compression uh, stocking compression guard garments for at least uh, one year but the long term results uh, in terms of efficacy and effects on the incidence of future lymph edema complications they are awaited then comes lymph reduction procedure uh, they are indicated when lymph is uh, so swollen that it int interferes with mobility and livelihood we have surgical <coughs> options that is Sistrunk, Homans, Thompson and Charles. In Sistrunk, basically a wedge of skin and subcutaneous tissue is taken and wound is closed primarily. So multiple uh, such wounds are uh, done, are uh, made to reduce the limb volume and most commonly carried out to reduce girth of the thigh. In Homans procedure, um, First, we uh, make uh, skin flaps and they are elevated and after elevating the skin flaps, subcutaneous tissue is excised from the flaps, uh, beneath the flaps and then trimmed, uh, they are trimmed to size to accommodate the reduced girth of volume and close primarily and they have more satisfactory uh, operation for the calf, uh, so it is uh, mainly done in the, in, in ca at calf level. And surgery is done to the medial and lateral aspect of the lap, leg and it must be separated first if uh, medial side is done then there should be a gap of six months uh, to do on the lateral side to avoid uh, skin flap necrosis here you can see in the human procedure so uh, in uh, on the right side cn is making is made uh, skin flaps are raised and then subcutaneous tissue that is fat is reduced is removed and then skin is closed primarily in Thompson, this is a modification of women's procedure and it is aimed to create new lymphatic connections between superficial and a deep system. So one, the one skin flap is denuded that is shaved of the epidermis and then sutured to the deep fascia and beneath and then buried beneath the second flap. So it is called buried dermal flap Here you can see in this picture subcutaneous fat we have make the flap then we removed the subcutaneous tissue and then this uh, epidermal this dermal flap is sutured in the deep 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 area and over it skin is closed to make the new lymphatic channels and in charles procedures this is initially designed for flariasis in this excision of all the skin and subcutaneous tissue is done deep to the deep fascia and this and uh, covering is done with the split skin grafts so here in this picture you can see in this in this in this figure this is basically the left 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 lower limb is uh, was with fleuriasis and the whole of the left lower limb with the gradual uh, gradual surgeries steps uh, the full thickness skin subcutaneous tissue is removed then it is done it is covered with the split thickness grafts and final picture is like this one here in this one you can see so this is all about investigation and the treatment of the patient with lymphedema. Uh, so in a brief summary, the treatment uh, that includes conservative treatment and surgical and in conservative, some uh, manual lymphatic drainage procedures are there and 
medicine along with the exercises and in treatment in surgical options we have bypass procedures we have liposuction and also there's a limb reduction uh, volume reduction surgeries are there in the form of cyst trunk in the form of Hohmann's, thompson and charles procedure if you have any questions you can ask so thank you very much allah hafiz